Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another short little unboxing video to share with you guys. Something from Vanguard. Uh, I have no idea what it is. I got that. I got it out of this packaging because this was kind of a, a pain. Uh, something called... Well, it says one atomic steel gray. I haven't actually opened it yet, um, but I did notice that the packaging is quite a bit more fancy than what I received from them when I unboxed the cheetah. So I have to assume there's something interesting in here. Thanks so much to Vanguard for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. Um, whatever it is, I'll link it in the description. I honestly don't know if it's available yet. So we're just going to unbox it and take a look. Not doing any reviewing today. It is, in fact, called the Atomic M390 Titanium. Designers, uh, Ivan, I always uh, have trouble pronouncing his name, but I know exactly who this is. Big fan of his design aesthetic, Ivan Braganitz. Braganitz? Guarantee I got that wrong. Okay, there's the website, but it'll be linked down in the description. So we have an Ivan and Vanguard collab here. Oh, I'm expecting big things. There's the, the Ivan logo, right? The beetle. Okay. Let's take a look. Really, really cool right off the bat. Nice milled pocket clip. Uh, we have a little bit of a pivot collar right here. Uh, interesting backspace for this first part. Kind of, I don't know what you call this, right? It's sort of the pyramid head at the top. A little fuller milled in here. A lot of detail. Normal, I mean, nowadays, what we normally see with the backspacer is it's the back 20% of the knife, and it's flat, and that's the end of it. Uh, so there's a lot more going on here. Obviously, some people, some people are going to prefer it one way or another. Can you get at this? Not really. That's, that's some kind of a dig. So I'm guessing that the flipper, that's a nice-looking blade, though. Uh, definitely an Ivan aesthetic, for sure. Uh, we have, it says Vanguard Atomic right there. I don't love it when companies put the name of the knife on the knife. It's kind of like putting Camaro on the windshield of your Camaro, but what are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> people like to do that. The flipping action is really, really great. And that flipper tab is super low profile. Also acts as this little scoop here acts as a little choke up spot behind the blade. Huge fan of their decision to do a nice light tumbled finish instead of the just so overused belt satin finish. I know a lot of people, you could say, hey, listen, like if I was going to say the second most used finish is a, you know, if I was going to name the second most used finish in the production knife world, I'd say it's a tumbled finish. You might be right. But the satin finish is ahead by a long shot. The belt satin finish is the only reason that I don't like it anymore is because it is it's like every other knife that I unbox, whether it's the budget world or it's the premium world. That's what I see. And I'm just, I guess I'm just tired of it. You could make an argument that people are tired of the tumbled finish, but I personally love it. I love how it wears over time, shows less scratches, stuff like that. Uh, look how they've done this swedge here. Interesting. Um, in the past, I've referred to this type of swedge or this aesthetic of swedge as Sparrow. And the only reason that I say that is because of that interesting production uh, XM18. I think that was exclusive to Monkey Edge. I don't know how many years ago. 2016, 2015 was probably the last time they did it. Maybe a little later. Maybe 2017. But it was the XM18 Sparrow grind. And it had a similar kind of like notched wedge right or swedge right there. Um, so it kind of makes me think of that. It's similar to the blade grind on the Lion Steel TRE. I think they have a similar grind on that blade, but it's cool. I don't see that very often. Really, really nice flipping action and thwack. Um, super smooth and likely after a day of disengaging and playing with this, I bet you it'll be completely fall shut. I'm going to try real quick to... Yeah, not a fuller that's accessible for reverse flick. It would have been nice to have that blade slightly taller. Maybe this scooped out a little bit more so we could get access to that. But fortunately... The one means of deployment you are supposed to use is very, very good. The tip of that flipper tab, that's what you're accessing just, just that much right there. Teeny tiny bit pokey, but not sharp. You can see there, it is knocked down a little bit all the way around the edges. 
Um, let's take a look for any other additional details that we might be missing here. I'm not really seeing anything. Let's maybe measure it because it feels like a full-size knife. Uh, and by that, I mean at least eight inches. So the overall length of this knife, which again is the Atomic. Overall length is coming in at eight and a quarter inches. Blade length is 3.65. Cutting edge is three and a half, really maximizing that. I have no idea what this is going to cost. I would hope that they would be reasonable. We are looking at a full-size knife, M390. We're looking at nice titanium. Not a lot, you know, not really anything going on on the scales other than just sort of this peak, right? But this is, yeah... It, it's contoured, but they've like peaked it, right? So you have this line through the middle. So still, you know, fairly intricate milling here, especially up here on the pivot. That's probably the coolest part um, is how they've got the titanium rising up to meet the base of this, still showcasing the bevels of the outside of the captive pivot. Um, that's pretty cool. I do like that. Um, but very designy and very continuous all the way through, even into the blade, which is a basic blade shape, but it still has that cool like continuation right here, right, this sort of carved out and this area opens up, this follows the curvature of the frame, and then we have these lines sort of, this this line here sort of continuing all the way down the knife. I do like that. It doesn't meet up perfectly, obviously, but it, it, it what I'm saying is the blade coordinates with the frame pretty well. I would hope that this knife is 220 to 250. Would it surprise me if it's more? No. Right? Everything's more than we think it should be nowadays. In fact, I remember saying that when I started this channel back in 2017 or 2018, everything could be 20 bucks cheaper. Well, nowadays, everything could be 50 to to $100 cheaper for sure. But um, that's what I would hope the price point is, 220 to 250 Sometimes I get what I want and sometimes I don't. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really nice though. And I do love the flipping action. That's awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple of size comparisons. You'll get a full review of this knife at some point, but not today. Uh, up against the AD10, and maybe let's do that. We're going to do similar size knives. Uh, the Rat 1, Demco, I'm not Demco, Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Um, how about the, yeah, sure, I've got the Spyderco Shaman out here. That's not how you say Shaman. It's Shaman. It's Spyderco Shaman. Yeah, I've been mispronouncing it for like six and a half years. It's almost like I'm doing it on purpose. Catch up! Catch up! I'm going to keep saying it the wrong way. <laughs> I'm going to forever, forever, forever and ever and ever. Uh, I think that's going to be... I'll, we can do the Spyderco PM2. That one's right here. Okay. Uh, there you go. That's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. Um, this is a cool knife. Check it out. I'll link it down in the description. Expect the full review a few weeks down the road from now. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex and on TikTok at the underscore metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.